So I, I start by saying that a good friend of mine from Oxford said, if you're not a native English speaker, start all of your presentation by making fun of the friend. So pardon my English. Uh, and now every mistake I make is fine. Uh, but, uh, for the record. Uh, I will add on top of it before I start that it's, you know, it's a bit hard to go and do presentations after like those people. Uh, so I have a high standard. So I try to match the, the quality level. Uh, but I don't promise anything, so you know, uh, have fun. So uh, you had a businessy like presentation, or really a really mass presentation, which uh, I personally really enjoyed. And now you have the short, let's do the stuff engineering project uh, or presentation. Um, we can do it like computer science -y and get into stuff, etc. But it's like eight thirty, so no. Uh, so if you want, uh, we have a paper and we have like uh, the presentation in YouTube, but now we will have the quick, uh, funny, uh, nice presentation stuff. So subtract the sub, uh, subset based strategy for faster HTML, uh, because any good computer science paper needs to start in this formula, cool name dot n -h, unclear name. <laughs> uh, so formula achieved. Next, uh, agenda quickly. So what is HTML and why we, what is cool? Oh, background. Uh, why using HTML is hard of from the definition. A uh, smaller database can solve CA. Uh, solutions motivation, our super cool approach, the subtract solution and results and conclusions are basically results and conclusions. <laughs> it's, it's straightforward, guys. Uh, the obvious slide of narcissism. Actually, my previous presenters didn't have one and I'm really disappointed. Uh, Postdoctoral in UCL, CTO, and Data Club, we are doing cool uh, life science algorithm development. So if you need one, uh, we're fully booked. So in a few mm -hmm. months' time. Uh, PhD in biomathematics, it's like mathematics, but which cancer, and doing too much coding recently, like 10 years' time. Uh, cool. So this is the right inter interesting stuff. So what is AutoML and why it's cool? So in raising your head, do you familiar with AutoML? Okay, great. Uh, how, many, how many of you actually use an AutoML in your work? Thank you, thank you. And uh, the last question, do you actually develop your own AutoML? Okay, great, this is the right answer. No, don't do it, it's a bad idea. Uh, I will tell you in a second why. So AutoML is really cool, and actually you should develop AutoML tools or at least use them. Uh, so I, I don't like when non-technical people do it because they just like, oh, we have super cool stuff, we put in some data here and get in a model and now we don't know what to do this. And actually the first presentation was actually about that I think. Uh, at least I can get the point from that. Um, so in this room when you actually understand why AutoML is hard and all the bits and bytes, you actually understand how to take the solution of that AutoML and actually make your extra personal adjustments to make it happen really. Mm -hmm. So I think it's fine that we understand in AutoML is cool. A few um, frameworks I want to address now before I continue. Uh, AutoSQLAN, anyone? No? So AutoSQLAN is a uh, library for Python, actually wrapping the uh, SQLAN or scikit-learn, scikit-learn library. And it uses really, really cool stuff. Uh, the first version was cool, the second version was cooler. Nobody used it, I don't know why. Uh, personally, I like it. And, and another, uh, Library we used in this research is Teapot. Anyone? Right. Teapot is an, another AutoML library, actually using a genetic algorithm type of algorithm. Uh, if you don't familiar with genetic algorithm, shame of you. Uh, if you do, great. Uh, I don't speak about it right now, but it's basically getting motivation of evolu uh, evolution, how evolution works, and applying it to search in direct search in solutions. Uh, personally, my uh, favorite type of algorithms. Uh, so now when we know it, uh, we actually, I find a really cute uh, Thomas Lessons, uh, like presentation, I know. And they actually used two AutoML stuff, basically uh, SQLAN and Teapot, uh, because these are the best. And compared to 15 people like you, uh, like randomly, at least they say so, we don't really know them, so we believe them. And they found out on the classical data from Kaggle that four out of, of the times AutoML wins, three times ties, and one time is human win. So about the ties, I was actually really interesting about the ties. So apparently, 
when you're looking about the able solutions of AutoML and machine learning done by people, it's uh, sometimes we just hit the same optima, and then we get a tie. Okay. So from these statistics, we can actually say that AutoML is really, really good nowadays. Don't take it. Don't take it as grounded. Don't use it like it's a magic box and you can use it anytime because it's actually not really easy. So AutoML is com a compute intensive, lead into relatively long execution time. So even like the naive AutoML is just like you can like develop it for yourself in 30 seconds. Let's take all the machine learning models in uh, SQLM. Take all the hyper parameter optimization techniques that we know. Take all the feature selection techniques that we know. Put them in the pipeline. Try all of them on your data, which is a good idea if you have like super big computers uh, and you don't. Not, not that big at least. Uh, so AutoML is hard. Even if you try the naive approach, it's hard. If you take any more fancy approaches like meta learning. A search in a direction, teapot, auto scan, et cetera, it's still really, really expensive to run it on real data. Okay? Because you need to try and train a lot of auto of ML pipelines each time. So it's expensive. So it's not that easy now. Model selection is limited to predefined structure. It's an issue. So it doesn't just try all the configurations. So you as a person can say, okay, take this and these models and they have a, like a cool assemble which other stuff or even non-machine learning models. And it can be a really good idea. And actually current AutoML models don't know, don't know how to do it. it. I don't say they won't, we're working on it, but currently they don't. So it's a problem. It's limiting you on your ability to develop cool new pipelines. Uh, they're not really good in picking meaningful features. So the feature selection uh, part of the pipeline, which you probably spend in most of the time of at least a like, decent portion of the time. Am I wrong? Mm -hmm. Okay, so exactly, thank you. Uh, deep learning guys and girls? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's like not here. Uh, this is like the classical stuff. So feature selection is hard, you know that, and actually it's really hard even for the computer and Currently, we're really stuck in feature selection. Again, uh, trying to improve. Uh, and finally, we don't have a background knowledge. Okay? And if, as a guy that's working on biology and clinical and stuff, doctors have a lot in their head. They don't tell you, you need to extract it for them, but they have a lot of knowledge. And if you have the time and enough coffee to extract this knowledge from them, they're actually really, really good at telling you like the right direction. Think about it as a really good seed. Like super good seed. Uh, so AutoML don't have it. They don't have enough time and coffee for and convincing power on over clinicians uh, yet. So how can we make AutoML better? So there are two main approaches nowadays. The first approach is let's search uh, ML pipelines better. Everybody does it. Everybody. Like SQLN, meta learning, cool. Let's start from a good seed, running for them, cool. Teapot, let's have a director search that's actually going, like, searching the space a bit better. Cool. Like, I can continue and continue. There are a lot of packages, there are a lot of ideas, many papers for in the last, I would say, four years. Uh, so we can search better. And we are searching better, and it's great and good for everyone. Uh, personally, enjoying the fact that people start in search pipelines better. But the other approach is most of the time actually like have a blind spot in people's heads. Oh, it's funny, blind spot in people's heads. So it, the smaller data sets can solve this. So think about the following idea. You have a big data set, yeah? Which is great, we love big data sets. Uh, everybody in the market, like I have four terabytes, I have four petabytes, cool. What do you, I, I cannot run for petabytes. Like maybe you can, but it's really expensive. Uh, so can you give me like, I don't know, 100 lines that represent the data? And the answer is, yeah, take the first 100. But again, from the first presentation, it's not really good. You have problems, and we already talked about them. So can we do it in a smart way? So the answer is, uh, we try to. And I will suggest one option, and uh, I try to convince that this is a good one. Uh, but again, you have, you have your computers, you can try another <laughs> options as well. So think about the following problem. You have a database, or basically a, a matrix. And I ask you to get a subset of the matrix. Okay? So far, so good. But the idea is that I want to preserve some measurements, some goodness measurement, if you want. 
So in our paper, we actually used a mean entropy, and just because. No, to be honest, we tried like 20 different types and mean entropy was the best one. But in the paper, we said that mean entropy is best. No, we just pick it and it was really good. Uh, and you know how we write papers nowadays. So we pick, we pick subset of the data. And the only idea is that we want to find the subset that maximize the mean and the mean entropy distance from the mean entropy of the real big data set. Okay? Am I clear so, so far? Great. So this is actually really, really hard. And we show you in a second how we do it. But the pipeline will go as follows. So we compute the really small data set from the big one. And uh, we apply the AutoML tool, which will be actually really fast because it doesn't have to run on 1 million rows and 50 columns and can run on like 1,000 rows and six columns. It's, it's an improvement, you can see by yourself. And now we actually have a really good seed for the AutoML. And actually, when you're searching stuff, starting from the right position, initial position, actually solve the problem most of the time. Yeah, think about it like that. If I need to go to the pizza and I'm starting really close to the pizza, it will be relatively easy to get the pizza. How many times I said pizza? <laughs> okay, great. So this is the motivation. I get into intermediate ML pipeline configuration, and now I just fine tune the restricted AutoML. What I do, I can hyperparameter tuning, I can feature selection better. In, deep, in this paper, we just find a hyperparameter tuning and still get a really decent improvement, which is showing how hyperparameters are important, and basically get in the final AutoML uh, pipeline. So if I get in the final ML pipeline from the AutoML without spending too much time. And I will give you empirical stuff in a second. Uh, so I promise to tell you how we do the cool stuff. So we're actually using uh, the genetic algorithm approach. I already said that's my favorite one. And the idea is actually quite simple. Get a candidate, a candidate or a gene if you want, it's just a subset of the rows and the columns. Okay? So far so good? Take the gene, and I, I can explain in a second what all, all the operations, but the basic idea is check, uh, check out its main entropy. It's really easy. Just take like pandas, take the row of the columns, calculate the mean entropy, calculate the mean entropy once of the first uh, big data set. Yeah? Don't compute it any time. It doesn't change. Believe me, I tried. Uh, same thing. So compute the L1, L2, and L infinity, whatever distance that you want, and get the result. This is the fitness of the gene. Or you can think about it is how the gene is good, okay? The goodness of the gene. Uh, and then the basic idea is if you have a good gene, you want to keep it. If you had the bad gene, you want not to keep it. Or basically, if it's a good gene, you can like find food and run out of predators. And if it's a bad gene, it's being killed by the predators, okay? So have this stochastic approach, no, 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 in me. Do it enough times and you should be fine. Okay? And uh, more details in the paper. Or you can ask me after the presentation. Uh, finally, you get a really good um, subset of the data. Is it the optimal one? No. It's a local optima. And if you want to provision a global optima, you cannot. I tried, uh, at least. No papers out there. I tried, nobody's like, doesn't work nowadays. If you can do it, actually, it should, should be great paper. Please uh, post me. Great. Result. So, OK, it works on theory. It sounds great. We get the like, local optima. The idea sounds like more or less fine, at least in this part of the room. Um, so we tried to take the 10 different data sets. I, everyone from Kaggle, because you know, Kaggle. And uh, you can see that the number of rows, columns, and the domain is we try to be like as random as we can. You can see actually really challenging data sets like number D8. Okay, you see a lot of columns and a small number of rows. It's actually called a cross of dimensionality. It's considered to be really hard task, specifically for AutoML, because AutoML, like the classical AutoML solution designed for more like the first row or the last row, a lot of, row, a lot of rows and a small number of columns. Okay. So actually, number eight is a challenging one, number three is a challenging one, etc. Uh, so random data sets, it's always a good start. And to be as robust as we can, we actually test out our algorithm um, 
when we compare it to a lot of other algorithms. So for example, if you just taken the best uh, subset we take from 100 tries. So you just randomly pick the subset, okay? Do it 100 times. And just the best one between them is the sub, uh, subset that you take. Or if you do it one like 100 times, what, what happens if you take it 24 hours? So it's a CPU bounded and not like sample bounded. And so on, such a greedy selection, Motiam bounded, uh, everybody. I, I guess you're all familiar with these algorithms, the classical, most of them. Okay. Uh, so we tried our algorithm comparing with a lot of algorithms and we tried to do it in two metrics as in parallel. So one is the relative accuracy. Uh, if we don't use our like minimize and maximizing approach uh, and just running the AutoML on the real data set, which again, really expensive, uh, how much accuracy do we lose? Okay, again, you can say F1 is better. I know this kind of people. Uh, accuracy is the standard, so we use accuracy. And the second uh, metric is the time reduction. Okay, basically we want to know how much time we have saved relatively. Okay, cool. So this is the results. So you can see a scatter plot on the left uh, showing we actually bounded the 95% because a reduction of more than 5% in the accuracy, we thought it's like, doesn't make sense. It like, okay, which losing like 1% of your accuracy, 2%, but 5% is just too much. Okay, at least in our head, you can move the bar as, as far as you can, or want. And the result is, a, yay, we won. So Subtrack uh, actually reduced an 81% of the computation time, and actually you suffer an around 1.3% of your accuracy. It's not that much if you think about it. You're getting like 80% faster, or like 1.3%, and it's relatively stable like 0, 06 in the standard deviation of between 10 data sets, so it's more or less fine. A uh, teapot constantly getting a worse result. We don't actually know why, uh, but you can see it's just worse in any way. Uh, um, so this is one. And the question is, can we actually do something? Maybe we choose the wrong number of rows, maybe we just choose the wrong number of columns and something like that. So, uh, um, Actually, we tried a lot of configurations. This is the skyline plot. I, we actually tested like 300 configurations. So we tested it out and we have cool heat maps because any good papers need to have a heat map nowadays. So relative accuracy reduction is a function of rows and columns. Uh, so you see we lose a lot of data when we uh, take in a really, really small subset and we lose in less data when we take it longer. Okay, so we have a trade-off. Uh, same idea, different plots. Great. Uh, so I, I just had to present him. So he made me promise to mention he's looking for brilliant MS PhD student. He's co the co-author of the paper, if you messed up. A uh, student that mentioned that his love is the best and you should drop him a message, okay? No, it's, it's fine. Uh, so I give you 30 seconds to copy his number, etc. I think 30 seconds is fine. Uh, and before you go in home slide, um, okay, so AutoML is an amazing tool, but you're not production ready yet. Okay, so don't use AutoML as like, a, I see too many clients of ours just say, yeah, give me an AutoML, I put it in production, he will get data and it's becoming better over time. Like, no, he has a concept direct, it will get worse over time, don't do it. Um, so it's an, it's not a civil bullet, it's cool if any you have it as part of your development pipeline for increasing the speed of your development or for P POC, it sounds great for me, but don't use it in production, not yet. Uh, you can either reduce the space of data space or for the amount tools, okay? So you can actually play which the data domain and you can play the search domain. Both options are valid, try both of them. And there are no free lunch. A further computation results in less accuracy, okay, at least in our experiments. It's not a, a mathematical proof. Okay, uh, this is my details. If someone wants to have a chat, and that's it. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah. Do you always claim the accuracy after the fact? You only? Is it me? When you do the subs, 
are uh, three, uh, one step back, yeah? and you do the other end. Right. But after this, you said that you fine tune the result of the end. Right. How, how do I fine tune? So I take. Yeah. Uh, the question is more is the result of the 98% is after the fine tuning or yes. before the fine tuning? Ah. Ah, okay. Yes. Can you name some commercial automated uh, tools or things that are available, open source libraries or anything like that? So uh, I started uh, to uh, auto SQLM, uh, which is really auto, like A O T O S K L E A R N. <laughs> uh, and Teapot, T P O T. Okay, so this is my two favorites. You have tons of them. Just like write AutoML like survey, you see like tens, really. HDO, my friend really likes it. I think it's it, it's shitty. Uh, it, it just too many configurations for me. I'm a math guy, so too much code around it. Uh, so really a lot of them. We have one, uh, but it's not free. Uh, Someone need to eat lunch here. That's a clue, and it's not free. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, when you do combination, uh, do you make sure that you don't have duplicate rows? Yeah, of course. And also, when you do a mutation, you might you might get uh, rows that uh, break correlation in the original data set, and like, can, can you mutate on a specific cell? Yes. No, you mute it at the row and a column. Okay, because then we... You basically, the, you, you can, I, I skip it because I don't want to get too detailed, but basically gene is uh, two vectors, one the I indexes of the rows and the second in the indexes of the column. So you don't control on the cell level, you control on the row level and the column level. Okay. So, okay, so this, this after you choose both what rows to take and what columns, or will you take, or you choose just rows and all the columns? No, both of them. We take a subset of the rows and the columns. This is the trick. If you just take a subset of the rows, it's like row the reduction. Subset of the columns is feature selection, and so we we do it like a cool stuff in between. Cool is a like personal so choice of words. You can call it whatever you want, but cool is a good choice. Mm -hmm. um, great. So have a nice evening, and uh, see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>